That is next week. This week, we have the end to the Jeep Eco Diesel Check Engine Light Chronicles. Let's go. What is up everyone? The Check Engine Light Chronicles continue on the Jeep Gladiator Eco Diesel. We're gonna be doing some more testing on it today. Here's what I mean. Let me bring you all up to speed with this Check Engine Light disaster or nightmare of a problem. I narrowed it down to two things. Bringing you up to speed is letting you know that I removed the Banks Derringer completely. Since I did that, the check engine light went away on its own and there's no longer a fault code. So about 700 miles later, still no check engine light. What I did was I reached out to Banks, there you were, super cool, and I sent the Derringer to them. They're inspecting it, taking a look at it, and they're gonna get back to me to let me know. However, as I removed the Derringer, I also took out this AFE intake. I'm going to put this intake back on. I'm going to put the intake back on with the car, truck, still stock. No Derringer in it. The only difference between this is this mass airflow sensor is a little bit further. It's right around here on the AFE intake and here's stock. Now, in all theory, that should be no problem. But I have to rule out that that PO26C code is not triggered by the intake. So I'm gonna put this back on and we're gonna continue driving it while Banks has the Derringer and we're gonna see if we can trigger this code to come back on. And that should kind of help us get closer to solving this check engine like fiasco. So we're gonna put that intake back on. Okay, intake is back on. So we're gonna start driving this thing, put 500 miles on it, 600, that was the sweet spot for that code. It doesn't come on right away. In the meantime, I hope we get some info back from Banks, but let's see if we can trip this code and uh, go from there. 75 years later. The damnest thing happened. I have to bring a lot of people up to speed with this check engine light and you know what it comes back full circle all of this started with me making a one-year jeep eco diesel review and it started off as a good video and then it just started going downhill however it does have a good ending and the weirdest thing happened there was actually nothing wrong with the check engine light from the factory from Chrysler. It was a Banks programmer issue. 
Now, let me be clear. These guys have been nothing but awesome. Nothing but great. Called them up, told them what the issue was, and they handled it immediately. But before I get to that, again, let me take you through what happened. Have my Jeep Eco Diesel, had it for a year, 13,000 miles, and the check engine light started coming on just out of the blue. 13,000 miles check engine light. I have an air intake on it from Air Aid and the Banks programmer and MBRP exhaust, so forth. Uh, again, all bolt on stuff. It is not a deleted Jeep truck. It still has DEF, all of that. We, we play in the rules here. The check engine light starts coming on and it's a PO26C fuel contamination code. I take the programmer out, check engine light goes away on its own. Had it looked at, I even put a new fuel filter to make sure, but seven, 800 miles later, no check engine light. I thought maybe it was an intake issue because the mass air flows in a different spot. Thought maybe it had a little leak, it wasn't tight on there. Put the intake back on from the stock one again, Another five, 600 miles, no check engine light. So it was looked at, they can't find anything. I looked at it, I'm stumped. I reach out to Banks after the intake. Uh, once I checked that off, it wasn't the issue. I reach out to Banks and they said, send it in. Here's a um, mail uh, return stamp. Let us look at it. And they admitted that it was on them. They actually said that it was one of the first kits purchased because i guess it's such a new um system and again i'm not comparing it to the ram eco diesel the 2022 jeep that uh, i got in january of 22 and i got this in january the banks programmer at uh 22 yeah so basically they took it back um looked at it, examined it put an upgraded map on it i guess tune um and they've asked me to drive it for 500 to a thousand miles and keep them up to speed keep them informed on you know how the truck's running and behaving and so forth and that's kind of where we're at with it so again the weirdest thing happened it was uh programmer related but again it took thirteen thousand miles for it to start doing that um i'm gonna put this thing back in the, the derringer and we're gonna keep driving it but I pretty much checked everything off at this point, and even with the light on, it always drove fine, no issues. Um, but it's been a 60-day battle trying to figure this out, so I think everything's resolved, but I just wanted to clear the air. There was nothing manufacturer-related. Um, it looks like it was just a programmer issue, so we're going to see how it runs, and we're going to go from there. Finally, good news. Kick the tire, light a fire. We have no check engine light, and I am beyond stoked. That's right, 90 days of pure hell with this thing, and it turns out it was nothing serious after all. Bank Stanger is in, AFE intake is back in, almost a thousand miles, no check engine light. That's a first. I'm stoked. In conclusion, I'm happy with the Eco Diesel. Still am. I love it. I still have no gripes about it. All that stuff was silly stuff going on. It was nothing serious, which can happen to any car, let's be honest. She runs great, and I couldn't be happier. But I also have a couple of little goodies, updates, that I did to it as well. Some new lights. Let me show you. Huh? Huh? Got some in the back, too. That is bright. And now we have both on. That backup camera has never seen more daylight. Looks good. Now there's nothing more that I like than like a nice clean look. See the switches? See the switches? All right, you see that? Shout out to Auto Solutions PA. They actually did all of the wiring on this Jeep. They did everything, the sound system and all that. And I like a nice clean look. The buttons are kind of discreet. They're black and they blend in there. Uh, with the A-pillar, and we put, as you can see, the Banks 
Derringer way up top there. So it's just a nice clean look. It's all sleek, very Batman-like. And well, I love it. Now also in the back, we have the sound system. Excuse the dirtiness. We do have to clean her, but I'm just kind of showing you around. Um, again, this thing is really for usage. I always say that we use the heck out of this thing. And I'm really just sharing everything in case you have a Gladiator or you want to do something similar like this. Um, as you can tell, nothing is for flash or show. Everything is for function use only. Obviously, the lights, are, uh, the lights in the back are for trailer usage and trail usage at night. We do ride a lot. We off-road a lot. So that was really the main reason behind that. Plus, it's really hard to see with the backup camera. So some lighting helps. But everything on here is really just for practicality. Um, kind of make it your own, if you will. So that's where I'm at with the Jeep. It's up and running. It's good and healthy. So I'm going to keep using it more and more and more. And you're going to be a part of all of it because I'm going to keep sharing that with you. I thank you for watching. Catch you next time. Bye. <laughs>